I'm always a little reluctant to do research in reference to something which is a concern of the day. In this case, coronavirus 2019, influenza or any other encapsulated RNA viruses. Primary reason being is the opportunity for exploitation. So with that in mind, I wanna read the conclusion of this accumulation of research by the particular individuals themselves. So you can get an idea, this is preliminary. This is basically what they're kind of taking the best guess possible in reference to other studies. Now, as I go through this, I'm going to show slides of the references they look at. You could pause any time, whatever. There's going to be links to the DOI citation, so you can follow it on your own later on. But to proceed to the, with the conclusion, considering that there is no treatment for coronavirus disease 2019 and treatments for influenza are limited, we welcome further studies to test these nutraceuticals that the researchers uh, basically covered as a strategy to help provide relief in those affected with encapsulated RNA viruses. So we're not looking at linear regression models, hazard ratios, confidence intervals, p-values, uh, any other confounding factors or biases that may be involved itself. We're just basically looking as the best possible guess based upon other studies. All right, with that in mind, let us proceed as follows. Recent research points the way to a toward a practical nutraceutical strategy for coping with RNA virus infections, including influenza and coronavirus. Nutraceuticals have potential for boosting the type 1 interferon response to RNA viruses, as reported in progress in cardiovascular diseases. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. And we'll cover the protocol that the researchers speculate on that may be of benefit to this particular type of uh, or I should say any sort of encapsulated RNA virus. To proceed as follows. While there are medications approved of the treatment of influenza, they typically are costly, have side effects, and are not very effective. I am quoting. Additionally, vaccinations against influenza may only be effective in fifth, around 50% of those vaccinated. Thus, there is a need for a safer and effective alternatives in those infected with influenza. I'm going to stop right there too. Even if the protocols speculated on by the researchers here are 100% effective, and they work, for example, that does not mean that you're not effective. So, keeping that in mind, all because someone follows this protocol, even if it was 100% effective, does not mean that you are not contagious and have a reason to basically avoid or skip isolation and or quarantine. This is just speculation, and even if it was effective and it worked, it still does not mean that you can't harm someone else. To proceed as follows. Over the past few months, a novel RNA coronavirus, now called coronavirus or uh, 2019 coronavirus disease, has broken out in China and has spread over to two dozen countries and affected more than 76,000 people, causing more than 2,000 deaths. This gives you a little perspective. This novel coronavirus is much more lethal than the typical flu with a current mortality rate of about 2.92%. In other words, around one in 33 people who are infected with this novel coronavirus will die. Where the annual flu has a mortality rate of just about 0.05 to 0.1%, this means about one in 1,000 to one in 2,000 will become mortally affected. In other words, coronavirus disease 2019 is around 30 to 60 times more lethal than the typical annual flu. Now, this is what drove the researchers to look at these particular nutraceuticals in the possible um, reference to helping either complementary alternative or whatever, but basically helping in reference to this particular outbreak. The authors draw attention to several randomized clinical studies, remember the ones we covered in the beginning, in humans that have found that over-the-counter supplements such as N-acetylcysteine, which is used to treat acetaminophen poisoning, and is also used as a mucus thinner to help reduce bronchitis exacerbations. And elderly belly extracts have evidence for shortening the duration of influenza by about two to four days and reducing the severity of the infection. Again, there'll be links to the DOI citation which has these links in it. The authors also note several nutraceuticals such as, this kind of surprised me, spirulina, beta-glucan, which is one of my favorite, and glucosamine. Now let's take a break real fast. Let's look at this. This gives you the information regarding the glucosamine itself. I would have never have guessed. But again, that's what the researchers are doing. They're accumulating information, see what's been effective in certain things, and then basically drawing the best possible hypothesis. And N-acetylcysteine have been found to reduce the severity of infection or to cut the rate of death in half in animals infected with influenza. 
Furthermore, one clinical study in humans testing spirulina noted significant reductions in viral load in those infected with HIV. Here is the hypothetical protocol based upon the best information the researchers had available to them. It is as follows, and it is on the screen as well too. Ferulic acid and or in place, place of ferulic acid, ferulic acid, lipoic acid, spirulina or PCB, N-acetylcysteine, selenium, glucosamine as pointed up before, zinc, yeast beta-glucan. In fact, I just read this morning that Chinese researchers were looking at uh, basically beta-glucan in reference to the coronavirus uh, 2019, and elderberry. So that is the protocol that they speculate on may be a benefit. However, again, keep in mind, this is just the researchers thinking out loud in reference to the studies that they reviewed earlier, I should say, at least released yesterday, it was February 24th, the article came out. All right, to proceed as follows. All right, therefore, this is the conclusion. It is clear that certain nutraceuticals have antiviral effects in both human and animal studies, commented the researcher. Considering, again, full circle, that there is no treatment for coronavirus disease 2019 and treatments for influenza are limited. We welcome further studies to test these nutraceuticals as a strategy to help provide relief in those infected with encapsulated RNA viruses. And I'm going to reiterate, further studies to test these nutraceuticals as a strategy. Again, the DOI citation link will be there. I hope you find this information of use. Again, a well thought out article. I do strongly recommend uh, that you basically follow links to the actual research itself so you can get an idea on how they basically formated, formulated their particular hypothesis and came out with basically the potential protocol based upon the base information, the best information they had available at the time. Again, further studies will be needed to be done and this is not a reason to avoid quarantine or isolation. Even if the protocol worked, doesn't mean that you're not infectious. Again, this is Ralph Church Channel signing off once again. I hope you find this information of use. Gratitude as always. Thank you very much for listening. I look forward to seeing you all in the next seven days. Until next time, bye.